Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to explore the differences between Databricks managed tables and external tables. We're going to do a quick demo on how to create both kinds of tables and discuss when to use which. Okay, so in the context of Unique Catalog, where you see what is a managed table and what is an external table. Managed tables are tables for which Unity Catalog or UC manages the lifecycle and the data files underlying those tables. So by default, managed tables are stored in the root storage location that you configure when you create a UC Metastore. You can optionally, though, isolate storage for managed tables at the catalog or the schema levels, which we'll talk about. Uh, and managed tables always use the delta table format. And when managed table is dropped, metadata and the underlying data will be automatically deleted. Now, external tables, on the other hand, are tables whose data is stored outside of the managed storage locations. So these tables are stored at an external location that a user specifies during table creation. So external tables support delta and non-delta table formats like Parquet, CSV, and more. And when the external table is dropped, UC does not touch the underlying data. Only the metadata is discarded. Okay, so I want to um, add a quick note as well uh, about managed tables and the external locations so just in general. Okay, so external location is an object in UC, and it is just a cloud storage location, whether it's in S3, ADLS, GCS, um, that UC can access with a storage credential that you provide. And it is not the root storage location that you defined at the UC Metastore level. Okay, so remember the root storage location at that metastore level is where managed tables would be stored unless you have specified a different storage location at the catalog or the schema level. And this specification is done by mapping to an external location when creating the catalog or when creating the schema. So here is an example. So you can see I am creating a new catalog here and I have the option to map to an external location and use that as the default storage location for all, all the tables in this particular catalog. Okay, so going back, when you create a managed table, what happens? You see, will check first whether you have a storage location defined at the schema level. If so, the table will be stored there. And if not, you see, will then check whether you have one defined at a catalog level. And if so, the table will be stored there. Now, if not, then you see will store the table at the root storage location defined at the metastore level. Okay, so the reason you might want to specify such locations at the catalog or schema levels is for stronger isolation boundaries between, say, dev and prod or between different BQs. All right. So to recap, for external locations, you can use external locations to not only support external tables, but also manage the storage for managed tables at the catalog or schema levels. All right. So now let's look at how to create a managed table. So I'm using SQL in this notebook. So first, I want to specify which catalog, which schema this table should be created under. And then um, I create a table with just a simple create table statement. All right, so if I look at the table details with a describe here, I can see that it has indeed been created as a managed table. All right, so now let's create an external table and see what happens. So to do so, you would need an external location already defined. And I have done so outside of this demo. Um, so if we go to the table creation statement, we can see that the only difference in, term of, in terms of syntax in, uh, in the SQL context is that I'm specifying exactly where this table should be stored in. Right? So this, this location is a directory in an in a external location that I've defined that just maps to a S3 path. Okay? So if I look at the table details, um, again, and, and I can, if I look at the type, I can see that it has indeed been created as an external table. All right. So well, now we have talked about um, managed tables and the external tables. So you might be wondering, right, when should I use which? So here are a few pointers and considerations. 
So now, first of all, we talked about the table creation syntax and the differences between the two. So remember, for external tables, you need to provide that location during table creation and specify exactly where that table should be stored in. And we talked about um, the data location as far as where the underlying data files will be stored for managed and external tables. And we talked about drop table behavior, right? So as a reminder for managed tables, when you do a drop table, both the metadata and the underlying data files will be discarded. Whereas for external tables, only the metadata will be discarded, right? So as a general rule of thumb, consider using managed tables unless you need to support non-delta table formats such as parquet, right? Because managed tables are delta format only. Um, also, um, if you have uh, external readers or writers that need to interact with the table data outside of Databricks clusters with DBSQL, that's another scenario where you can use external tables. Right? And um, also something to keep in mind is that uh, performance uh, optimization features and just generally new product features, they would come to manage the tables first and may roll out to external tables at a later stage. So just to be sure you're always taking advantage of the latest optimization features, such as uh, auto maintenance or auto tuning, managed tables would be a good choice. All right. So I hope this has been a helpful primer on managed versus external tables in Databricks.